football. Our state championships will be decided in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. A little bit different this year. Expanded format with nine championship games starting on Thursday in the middle of the day. And our first speaker will address that. He's a native of Ruston, chosen to direct the LHSA in 2006 after serving as principal at Ruston, Haynesville, and Cedar Creek. Please give a warm New Orleans Quarterback Club welcome to Mr. Kenny Henderson. Kenny? questions and go over some things with the, uh, the Superdome. Uh, it, it is going to be a, a very much a different year this year. You know, we've always had five, uh, well, for a long time, we've had five classes, five state championships, and this year we'll have the nine state championships. Uh, we do start at 12.30 on Thursday with the uh, Division three championships. I, I may get my, some of my terminology wrong, so hopefully I'll see how y'all can hang it every day. But we've got a Division III uh, game. Uh, that'll be uh, Calvary out of, out of Shreveport. We'll be taking on Archbishop Hannah uh, from the North Shore. And then Division II starts at 430 with uh, Coach Curtis and JT, uh, John Curtis uh, taking on U High out of uh, Baton Rouge in the 430 game. And the 830 game will be uh, C. Bird High School taking on Archbishop Rummel. So uh, those are some good games and we we'll, should, should start everything off on Thursday. On Friday, we began at 12.30 with uh, Hainesville High School uh, taking on Mangum High School, two North Louisiana schools. Uh, Manny High School will take on Kinder High School in the 2A game. And then the final game of the night at 8.30 will be Livonia versus Union Parish. Many of you will know Union Parish is Farmable High School. Uh, they changed their name just this year to, uh, to Union Parish High School. And then on Saturday, we'll begin at 12 noon uh, in the Division Four game with Vermilion Catholic taking on St. Frederick. And uh, the 4, four o'clock game will be Edna Carr taking on East Jeff. And at the final game of the, uh, the three-day will be the 5A championship with Acadiana taking on Parkway. We do have some... Some posters that I brought today, so if you would like to get a poster, uh, you might want to get one of these because we, we may not have any more like this anymore with, with nine games on it. So this might be a, you know, a keepsake to uh, hang on to. Uh, you know, you, you, you never know. You never know. Uh, one thing I will say about the games, we've got... Uh, Eight of the schools, I believe, I, I believe I'm telling you right, that have never played in the Dome that will be here this, this, this weekend. And five other schools that have not been in the last 10 years to the Dome. So really, we've only got what you would call five veterans back to play this year, with the rest of them pretty much being new because they'll have new, uh, new coaching staff from the last, you know, and they haven't been here in 10 years. And so... And then also, when you look at the power rankings, the power rankings still continue to, to do quite well because we do have the, uh, you know, several of the number ones made it six out of the nine classes. The number one team is the ranked team, did make it to the dome. And six of the number two teams made it to the dome. And then we have uh, some number threes, fours, and fives, and one six, uh, six seeded team made it to the dome. So definitely the, the you know, the higher seeds have been advancing on to the playoffs, so. Um, tickets are on sale now. You can get them at, at the Ticketmaster or any of the schools that are playing in the games. They, their tickets, uh, their pre-sale tickets at this point are a little bit, a couple of dollars off from what you can get by the time the door opens up on, uh, on Thursday. So uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of fans there and we'll have some good, uh, some good games. I know that y'all would probably rather ask me questions than hear me just babble. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and open the floor up, and I'll try to answer anything that you might have uh, to come my way. So where, who wants to start? Go ahead. All right. This will be a good one. I have a question. Yes, sir. If uh, Rumble wins their game and Acadia wins their game. Who's the state champion? Well, uh, Rommel is the Division uh, One state champion, and uh, no, I, well, I, that's your answer. Rommel is the Division One state champion, and uh, Acadia will be the Class Five A state champion. You know, 
that's, that's how the principals of the school set it up this last year. Uh, you know, when it, this was brought forward, it was voted on in January. I hope y'all do understand that, you know, the principals of the schools make our rules and regulations. And it's my job then to enforce whatever they, whatever they make up and do. And, uh, and this is what was passed, and so uh, this is what we have. And there will be some proposals that will be looked at in January. Um, there is one proposal that does away with all of this, and you go back to five classifications. Um, there's also each, each class will vote independently uh, to, to decide if they want to stay select or not select. So uh, there'll be one all-encompassing vote, and then there will be each class will vote also. So 5A could vote to go back together next year. 4A could vote to go back together next year. Uh, you know, and, and, and right now, the little bit of word that I've been hearing, that's, that's a good possibility. I don't know if 4A, a 3A, 2A, 1A will vote to go back together. But right now, you've only got uh, 10 teams in what is, what is Division One, which is the 5A group. And, uh, you know, that makes up a good district. It doesn't really, doesn't really lend itself for a state championship as such. Not that the winners that will win on Thursday night are not deserving of their championship, they are. Uh, because that's, this is what they've been handed. So they played the game that, that they were asked to play. And the two teams that are here playing on Thursday are the two best teams in that division. So, you know, they, they, they were given a set of rules and they followed them. And so from that standpoint, you have to be, you have to be proud of them. Yes, sir. You, know, uh, you, you alluded that the principals are the ones that are voting members. But isn't it true that the non-football school principals were also the voting members of this new format? Yes, sir. Is there a proposal to get those type of principals out of the voting for when it comes to football issues? Well, it, it would, there is a proposal that would do that. But if it's passed, it still wouldn't go into effect until July 1. And so it's, it's still not going to affect this year. So what's the motivation for a principal that doesn't play football to have a vote in that, in that football issue? Because they're a member of the association. It's just like if, if just because we only have a few schools that play gymnastics, everybody votes on a gymnastics rule too. Why? People don't think of it from that standpoint, but not every school plays every sport. And they don't necessarily have to vote if they don't want to. None, none of them have to vote. They can abstain from any kind of vote. But the way that the, the bylaws have been written up, and this has been the way that it's been done since 1920, that everybody, every a member principal can vote on an agenda item. And now we do have a proposal that would only allow uh, a school that actually has that sport as of July 1, I mean January 1, would be allowed to vote at the, at the January meeting. Uh, you know, Mr. Rabinac helps us greatly with, with wrestling. But right now, we only have 90 schools that wrestle. But if there was a wrestling proposal, everybody in the state could vote on that wrestling proposal, even though, as we speak, only 90 schools would really be affected by the rule. Yes, sir. In theory, when you uh, brought up initially the new teams that are now experiencing the Super Bowl, is this was the, uh, the plan, I guess, the teams that never went to try to give their school a chance? Is that why just to experience the Superdome, even though you have a number of uh, state champions? I, I guess you could say that's one, one, one of the thought processes. Like, well, well, we never have a chance to go to the How can we increase our chances to get there? I go, for instance, I'm familiar with Manning High School, in that area, Winfield, you know, with the school up in Natchitoches. So I know that in that area, they all for this simply because they think they have a fighting chance or they want their kids to experience the Superdome. Now I'm old school, I think, hey, I know growing up when we won the state championship in 1977, it was a measuring stick for us at South Lafouche to go through the Catholic district. So if we could go through the Catholic district and win in that quarterfinal game, then we know that we were amongst the best of the best. Well, and then, you, you know, uh, you can also look at it, y'all are, are looking at it from a standpoint of allowing some, some, I guess for lack of a better term, the public schools to be able to get a chance to play in the Dome. Uh, those first two games, that'll be, the first game that will be played on Thursday, uh, you, have some, you have some private schools that are now allowed to be able to be in the Dome because in the past, uh, you know, the, especially the game on, on Saturday, uh, the 1A schools, 
we, we, you know, when you, when you have that vote on, uh, in January, the 1A could actually, is, the 1A is the only class that the private schools outnumber the public schools. And so you would think, okay, the 1A is going to vote to go back together. I'm, I'm not sure that's what's going to happen because the, pri the private schools now like the fact that they don't have to play Haynesville or West St. John. You know, so it, it goes both ways. And, and uh, you know, the, the, the whole argument that we had last January, some of that, some of the, some of the people that were um, advocating for one side or the other have now changed their mind. Haynesville High School would love to have back together again because they, they went through a season this year with really not a whole lot of competition. They like the idea of the competing competitions, but some of the private schools that didn't have to didn't have to deal with Haynesville, they're saying, no, we like we like the fact that we're getting to stay, you know, we don't have to put up with them. So it, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. I don't know. That's why we the principals make the decisions. Any other questions that we might have? All right, thank y'all very much for having me and hopefully y'all